Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. But today, June 5th, 2022, is no regular Sunday. Today is Pentecost Sunday. This is the day when we commemorate the giving of God's Holy Spirit, the pouring out of God's power, the birth of the church, the acceptance of Gentiles as children of God, the time when everyone can be baptized in power. Our message this morning is entitled, Where's the Power? We will read from Joel chapter 2, verse 28 through 29, a book written some 500 to 900 years before the birth of Jesus the Christ or the promised one. The name Joel means Yahweh is God or the Lord is God. In his day, Joel prophesied mainly in Jerusalem and, and to Judah, although his message is relevant to us today. Because Joel spoke strongly about the day of the Lord, a day that we are still anticipating, a day of darkness and gloom, a dreadful and terrifying day. Therefore, Joel strongly called his hearers to repentance. Repent and get right with God was his cry, was his plea. Because God is coming back real soon. Jesus is on his way back and he will judge the quick and the dead. So with that said, let us dive right into our message right now. Where's the power? Turn with me please to Joel chapter 2 verse 28 through 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream dreams, and your young man shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. This is God himself that is speaking here. He said, it shall come to pass afterward. That word translated afterward is the Hebrew word ahar, meaning Sometime later, that is, pertaining to a time subsequent to another time, according to the Dictionary of Biblical Languages and Semitic Domains, the Hebrew Old Testament. In other words, it was pointing to a time set by God himself. So what time would that be exactly? Well, I'm going to answer that question in just a little bit, but first, let us take a look at the book of Acts. I need to lay a foundation for us. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came the, a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Did you notice that? Most translations say had come or arrived, but that word means so much more than, oh, it came. It means more than that. So according to the theological dictionary of the New Testament, it means to fill with or to fill completely. A threshing flood with corn. It means up to its pillars. It means completely filled as of the cosmos. So this particular uh, Pentecost Sunday was fulfilled. It was fulfilled completely. So let us just break this down so we can understand it better. Here's what I want, want you to please understand. The Jews were celebrating the Feast of Pentecost for centuries. But it was only a shadow of things to come. This Pentecost celebration was the Jewish festival Shabbat 
also known as the Feast of Weeks. It was their first fruits celebration. And that's why it was held during the wheat harvest. And they would bring the, the, the first harvest of their wheat harvest and they would present it before the Lord. And they would celebrate and they would have a good time. They would praise the Lord. They were thankful for the bountifulness that God had given them that year. So the word Pentecost means 50, as in 50 days after the first day of the week after Passover. So what that was is the, the, the Passover would be on this day, then it would count until it's the first day after this Passover. Then it would count one week, two weeks, up to seven weeks, which would be 49 days. And then that very next day would be the first day of the week, that Sunday would be the 50th day, Pentecost. It would be the Feast of Weeks, and they would celebrate. So it was celebrated every year. And that's the reason why the New King James Version rightly renders the word ahar as had fully come, because this was the fulfillment Everything that was leading up to this point in time, the time ascribed by God the Father himself, was fulfilled in this day. And it was the fulfillment of the prophecy by the prophet Joel. So in fulfillment, the Holy Spirit descended to earth with shouts of acclamation. The sound was like the sound of a mighty rushing wind when the very breath of God rushed upon the 120 who were gathered in the upper room and filled them wholly and completely with the power of God. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So let's back up and take another look at our prophecy in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 through 29. It says, And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And that is God who is saying that. Now, let us take a look uh, at Peter and what he said in the book of Acts. I want Peter to interpret this for us so that there's no mistake. I don't want to misinterpret it. So Peter, go ahead and interpret this. And I want you to remember 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, he has ascended into heaven and instructed his disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until they were endowed with power from on high. So there was 120 of Jesus' followers gathered in the upper room for 10 days. Then on the 50th day, the day of Pentecost, the very first day of the week, a Sunday, the blessed Holy Spirit rushed upon all mankind. Now, here is what I want you to do. I want you to do a little research for me. I want you to continue reading the book of Acts and read it continuously all the way through to the last verse in the New Testament, the last verse of Revelation. And I want you to try to find where God said that he had stopped pouring out his Holy Spirit. I couldn't find it. But there are pastors, there are people, there are religious teachers who claim that the outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit was only for that time. But let us, let us take a look at how Peter interpret the scripture and let us see what time it was it was really acts chapter 2 verse 14 through 18 but peter standing up with the 12 raised his voice and said to them men of judea and all who dwell in jerusalem let this be known to you and heed my words for these are not drunk as you suppose since it's only the third hour of the day but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And so now he quotes Joel. 
And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And my and on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. Please take special note of the time frame that Peter indicates. He says that in the last days. Well, that's what I read. I hope that's what you read as well. So if Peter was living in the last days, which he indicated that he was, then how much more we who live in the 21st century are living in the last days? Matter of fact, I would venture to say that not only are we living in the last days, but we are living in the last of the last days. My point, though, therefore, is if God was pouring out his spirit then, in the last days, during the days of the apostle Peter, and these, these days are the last of the last days, when did he stop pouring out his spirit? If he didn't stop, then that means he's still pouring out his spirit. We can still receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, some pastors and theologians try to convince us that that was only for those days. Yet it plainly tells us that it's for the last days. So can someone show me where it said that God has stopped pouring out his spirit or that we have stopped being in the last days. Also, I want you to notice with me that the word pouring means to pour out like a drink offering. And it could also mean to lavish as well. So God is lavishing his Holy Spirit on all flesh, as in verse 17, then that simply means that God is lavishing his spirit on all flesh. Everyone, every single soul, the entire humanity, every man, woman, and child. No one is excluded. If you want it, you can have it. All you've got to do is to receive it. So if God has never stopped pouring out his spirit, then that would beg the argument that he is still pouring out his spirit, which means that the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us just as Paul stated in Romans chapter 8. But here's the problem. The same pastors who say that the power of God does not actually dwell in us and that those miracles and signs and wonders and mighty acts of healing and were only for those days they, they, and, and what they do, they, they, they try to ridicule anyone who wants more than just a three-point sermon and a poem. And, the, and they're the same ones who can sit through a movie that uses the name of their God as a cuss word and they don't even notice it. Is it any wonder then that that experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit has been restrained from us. When we use his name as a cuss word and we don't even notice. We pay people to cuss. Let's not get off on that. Problem number two is that we restrict the power of the Holy Spirit either through ignorance or through unbelief. And some people are like Thomas. They just refuse to believe. Problem number three is that some churches right out deny the power. And Paul said that those, those churches are going to come. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And from these churches, turn away because the word of God, the kingdom of God, is not about talk, it's not about chat, it's not about, it's about power. And so they deny the power of God. So, God is pouring out his spirit still on all flesh. But the catch is, you 
You gotta want it. You gotta desire it. You can let his Holy Spirit splash all over you and let it run down to your feet and onto the ground like the water on a duck's back and never let a drop soak in. You just stay dry as a chip, as they say. You can let that happen. But we have the power of God living inside of us. If we, he offers all of that, why would we settle for so much less? Why don't we want more and more of God? Because God wants to give more and more of himself. And especially as these last days begin to approach us. Because he wants people saved. But because there's more power in Wicca, people are turning to Wicca because they do not want to spend the time in prayer and fasting and seeking their God. All we have to do is to stir up the gifts that's inside us according to our faith. There is no need to be crying out and begging and pleading for what God has already given us. All we got to do is to spend time with him. We don't need to be like our little adopted boy. Our little boy Gabe, when he was young, he would cry for things he already had. He would go on and on and he would say, but I want it. And we would say, yes, Gabby, you can have it. And he would say, oh, I want it though. And we would say, yes, Gabe, you can have it. It's yours. Oh, but I want it. Gabby, you already have it. We have given it to you, Gabby. You can have it. And it would go on and on like that for a while until it became taxing. And maybe that's the way that God feels. You hear Grandma beg, please, please, please. And God said, I've already given it to you, it's yours. Just act on it. Just activate your faith. But, because, you see, that's not the way that God wants us to act. He does not want us just to beg and plead. He said, he knows how to give good gifts. And he gives it freely. The scriptures actually teach us that all of God's promises are yea and amen. So we don't need to beg and plead for what we already have. God knows how to give good gifts. And he wants to give good gifts to his children. Don't you want to give good gifts to your children? Of course you do. I want to give good gifts to my children. How much more God, a holy, a righteous, a good, good father. How much more does he want to give us good gifts? us, his children. We have that Pentecostal power living inside of us. And if we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, all we have to do is to tap in to it through prayer, through fasting, and with faith and obedience, we shall obtain it. God demands obedience. He said it's better to obey than to sacrifice. God also demands holiness. That means we can't be mixing all, all of this secular stuff with the holiness. God demands righteous living. He wants us, he, he doesn't want us to pay to go to, to see a movie that, that takes his name and uses it as a cuss word. He's, he, he, that's our God. He elevates his name. He holds his name honorable. And we should hold his name in honor and in high esteem. We should be offended when someone uses his name as a cuss word. You cannot expect to mix the secular with the things of God and expect the same result as the men of God who pray and fast and seek the face of their God and live godly lives, shunning evil and clinging to that which is holy and good. As the scriptures put it in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 16, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what argument or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? I want you to please understand that we are the temple of the living God. Therefore, we must operate in love 
and compassion, obedience and reverence, self, selflessness and humbleness. Listen to this. There are three killers of, the, of experiencing the fullness of God's power. They are, number one, lack of love. Number two, pride. Number three, prayerlessness, especially intercessory prayer. The scriptures teach that after all signs and wonders and miracles and tongues have all passed away, three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Without love, we're but clanging cymbals, a noisy gong. We're nothing. We can surrender our bodies to the flame. But if we do not have love and compassion for our fellow believers especially, and for unbelievers, for the world, for mankind, for God so loved the world, it did not say, for God so loved the righteous. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that he might die, that they may live if they would only but believe. The same is true with pride. You cannot be puffed up with self-importance. You can't even be puffed up and prideful over your own righteousness and expect to enter the depths of God. Neither can you enter into the sacred place of the Almighty without prayer. Pastors, lay people, they, they, they spend an average of seven minutes a day in prayer. The scripture says in, in Psalms 91 verse 1, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You cannot abide in the shadow of the Almighty without prayer. Prayer is a Christian's biggest weapon, but it is so few utilize it. So few grab a hold to it. The bottom line is this, do not expect to see God's intimate side without love, with being full of pride or prayerlessness. Here's the thing, we are not seeing God's power and the might of his hand moving in his church today as he did long ago. And instead of us trying to figure out why, we chalk it up to God does not move like that anymore. That was for then, not for now. Because God, certainly it's God who has changed and not us. We are, we've done nothing wrong. While we sit and enjoy the cuss word movies and not even blink an eye or bat an eye, we waste our time on TikTok and other social media. Or we, 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 we entertain ourselves with video games and TV and some other type of distraction instead of us seeking the face of our God. Yet we expect to see a mighty, mighty move of God and we don't have time for him. Peter said that God said, in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And as we discussed earlier, nowhere is it written that God has stopped pouring out his spirit on, or, or that the last days have ended. Therefore, God is still pouring out his spirit on all flesh because we are still living in the last of the last days. I would encourage you today to seek to receive your share of God's Holy Spirit. I would seek him today. You have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead living in you. So stir up the gifts that were given to you. Stir up that faith that God has awarded you. Or maybe you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Therefore, you don't have that spirit, the spirit of God living in you. 
But you would like to have the Spirit of God living in you. You would like to tap in to that power. If that's you today, would you pray this prayer with me? A prayer of repentance. Just like Joel preached. Repent, for the day of the Lord is near. Would you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for rebelling against you. I'm sorry for all the things that I've done. I ask you to wash me clean. Help me to live for you. A life of holiness. A life of righteousness. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your power. Help me by faith in my Lord Jesus to tap into that power. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now what you need to do is to find a Bible-believing church not one of those progressive churches, but a Bible-believing church who believes in holiness and righteousness, believe that there's a right way to live and a wrong way to live. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. Let the power of God fill you and make disciples of you, and you go forth and make disciples for Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope, be blessed, and stay blessed, and happy Pentecost Sunday.